It's November 14th, and finally, tonight's the night that I get to not only install the Intel Optane SSD 900P, which you saw me do on camera last week, but also use it. Now that I have not just the cable, but this adapter card that's going to go in the PCI slot, that'll let me actually use the device. Okay, there are no LEDs of any kind in this card. And you just heard the bias boot sequence finish with the beep code of everything's happened. So now ESXi hypervisor is booting, ESXi 6.5. And we'll have a look at how things look. Uh, we already know I need to go in to change that bifurcation setting, which is on by 4x4x4x4. By four by four by four by four. And we'll see how it goes as far as recognizing the drive that is now attached. My very first test of the 900P. I'll cut over to desktop view now. Okay, now I've got my web browser pointing to the IPMI or IKVM, uh, the out-of-band management, the VGA output of the server. So this is how Supermicro servers look, and I'm waiting for the BIOS power on self-test to finish so I can hit the delete key and get into settings. And you just saw it said entering setup. Let me maximize that window for you. And soon we should see the BIOS screen. All right, we're getting an A9 error code. <laughs> okay, this is that same hang I was experiencing with a P4800X when that was in the slot. Uh, I'd run into a hang. So to get past this, I'm going to need to remove the card temporarily, get into the BIOS, and set that PCIe function for UEFI rather than um, legacy or whatever word is used to get past this A9 error. So I'll be right back. And I'm back. So I did reboot the system, bringing up IKVM, which is much quicker than having to deal with a Java file download and answering all those prompts and hitting the delete key. I might have missed that. So we're trying to get into the BIOS settings. Uh, with the card removed, that should not be a problem. We should not have the A9 power on self-test hang any longer. Um, I believe I may have seen this behavior before too when working with the P4800X. It might be doing a second reboot or something. Uh, I'm going to wait a little longer to conclude anything. And just in case there's something up with the HTML5 interface, I can convince you it's not that by going to the home screen and just starting up the Java interface. Meanwhile, back here, it's still black. So it looks like we really do have a blank screen there. Not sure why. So we're doing another power cycling, and just to show you that the HTML5 interface looks the same as the Java interface, that should be pretty convincing. And for keyboard, keystroke pass-through reliability, generally you're not going to want both open, so I just closed the Java one. Let's crank the quality to the max percentage. And now we just wait for a little bit for power on self-test to finish. So this time I'm ready with the delete key to get into the BIOS a little quicker. We'll see how it goes. So again, the PCIe card, the adapter card, has been ejected. Okay, I'm in the BIOS now. I'm going to crank up the display to full quality. There it is. All right. And now let's go over to advanced PCIe configuration. This is what I wanted to show you. So M.2 we're going to leave alone. Legacy work seems to work fine with whatever device. This I'm going to put back at the factory default uh, by 16. And this I'm going to turn to EFI. And then hit F4 for save and exit. And that should do the trick. 
I should now be able to power down, unplug, plug in the PCIe card, plug the power cord back in, and power up. So I'll be back in a little bit after all that's done. Okay, we're back, and not only did the BIOS finish, but we're loading the hypervisor. Now with NVMe drives, you don't see them in the BIOS. There's nothing to show you there. SATA devices are enumerated and you see them listed in the BIOS. But with NVMe, they never were. So you didn't miss anything, the fact that we kind of missed the power on self-test there. Now during this process, looking real carefully there, there's a NVMe driver that loads. And I'll need to take a look at which one is loaded. I believe it's the inbox driver, the one that comes with the ESXi that tends to work fine with Samsung devices, but for full performance from Intel devices, you tend to need their driver. Now this is a consumer 900P, so that's point of interest number one. 4800X, of course you'd expect full VMware support. 900P, probably not so much. <laughs> so there it is, Intel NVMe loaded. So I already have the driver installed, that's for the P4800X. We're about to find out together if that seems to work for the 900P as well, which is a rather similar drive, but a different warranty and a consumer uh, package. So I'm searching for Intel 900P driver download, and we'll see what that page looks like. There you go, you don't get any ESXi, right? But if you look here, um, well, that's weird. <laughs> Where did I get the driver from? Huh. All right. Let's try that again. There's definitely driver. Oh, currently no drivers. All right, looks like maybe they're updating their site or something. On the usual URLs, let's see if this one works. Yeah, but that's not for the 4800X. It's telling you to go here, which is back where we were. Oh, maybe not. All right, P4800X. It includes a bunch of Windows versions, uh, but there's no VMware version. So we're not there yet. All right, and that's probably what I have downloaded. Notice the date a little earlier this year. So I'll have to check that out once the machine is up. I'm not actually quite fully booted yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a putty session ready. And once the machine is done booting, we'll have a look around. I'm probably gonna go ahead and use the host client first. That's not gonna respond until it shows us the IP address to log into on here. IP address or host name, of course. So this is it, uh, kind of the drum roll moment. We are very close to having uh, my very first 900P operational. And it's time to go ahead and try out host client and get into that system. Okay, I'm also gonna putty my way in. All right, I've got some commands to kind of check out what's going on. A few things, um, back to putty. Uh, let's start with manage hardware. All right, here's our PCIe devices. There it is, the Intel Optane, visible. Excellent, yay, uh, that's what I was hoping to see, and you can even pass it through, which is slick. So you could pass it through to a particular VM, or we can just VMFS format it. So this already means 
under adapters, we're likely to see it as well. So there's two data stores. Those are the devices you uh, may or may not have seen in the video. There it is. And there's the physical devices. So if we say something like new data store, the wizard will offer that device. And there it is, ready to be NVMe formatted. All right, let's go for it. That's the first test I was planning on anyway. All right. You know what? I'm going to finish up this video with just trying the first test of a VM on here. VMFS 6 formatted, notice. And then I'm going to boot over to Windows and check on the firmware later. I just want to get some ESXi testing under my belt. And what I'm hoping for is I might actually get faster results than what I saw with my engineering sample of a P1400X, which was not representative of the GA product. I'm also bringing up the new HTML5 based vSphere client. And we should see a new data store. So if we click on storage, you can see a 900p, which is a terrible name and doesn't match my naming scheme. But if we go to summary, we can see the capacity, 260, and free, almost all of it. So it worked. Those are all really good signs. Now let me take a moment to be consistent with my naming scheme that I use for everything else. So what it should be called is 1541 underscore. I can... Uh, Kind of cheat here. All right, how about I put a template on there? To be fair, this clone of a template, which is really what a template is, basically a clone of a VM that's marked read-only, kind of, um, is actually on a SATA SSD. So this is slowed down quite a bit compared to when you deploy from one NVMe device to another. Still, didn't take very long. Less than 30 seconds. So that should actually be booting up. And it's already booted. Now, because of Windows Update and stuff, this first boot tends to be more sluggish than a normal boot. Um, <laughs> but my impression is they're pretty strong that uh, it's not sluggish at all. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect networking to prevent stuff like any interaction or Windows Update junk from happening. Uh, looks like I have Task Manager auto starting, so that's kind of our free built-in way of seeing are the CPU settle down. All right, so now on camera, I'm going to go ahead and do my very first reboot on Intel 900P formatted VMFS 6 using ESXi 6.5.8.1, not having any idea what firmware the 900P is at. under 10 seconds, which is quite good. And the system, uh, let's see how CPU looks. Actually, I still have a script running that deals with Task Manager, so machine wasn't quite done starting everything in auto start. 
now it is. Anyhow, CPU is at 2%. It's ready for action pretty quickly. All right, I'm going to try another reboot test, uh, pointing out that this is only two CPUs. So Intel's documentation is pretty clear on this. Let me show you. I'm going to go to tinkertry.com. And this article has all sorts of good tidbits about testing. Okay, here's one about SSD benchmarking on Linux. Here's another one under ESXi. That sounds promising. And you'll see things like how many virtual CPUs to attach, how many pair virtual adapters to have. I haven't done any of that. So this is just a base image here. And there's only one pair of virtual device, not a virtual NVMe device, for instance. So only one storage controller. And it shows a standard Microsoft in the VM. That's expected because we're on top of a VMS file system. This VM is not seeing the 900p. All right. So anyhow, uh, there it is. You know, lots of details, including um, one of the other articles talks about uh, BIOS settings it recommends too. So lots to do here to potentially crank up the performance a bit. Going to do another reboot. Let's see how we do with how many seconds it takes to reboot. So there's the VMware logo from the, VM, the window splash screen now at 51 to the desktop showing the clock in the bottom right is at 10, 11, 12, about 12 seconds. So pretty fast. Um, hard to tell at this point if the speed's about the same as the P4100X, but again, that was an engineering sample and a product that's at at least double the price. It's just pointing all those things out. Now, the fact that we're on a 260 versus some other bigger capacity than 100P does not matter. Intel has the same specs, regardless of the size of the drive. All right, so wrapping up here, uh, we are going to look at the firmware of the NVMe device, which failed. So it means I need to revisit my techniques there. Um, but I'm also going to want to have a look at the NVMe device driver that's in use. Hang on a second. Okay, I've got the command that I've been um, testing. And there's our driver. So we can see VMware is who makes it. And let's go back and see, did I ever find this? One, two, zero, three, two is in use. One, two, one, one, five is available. So already we're seeing that there's a newer driver out there. So many steps yet to be taken. Uh, some of that I'll probably just do off camera and then publish an article saying, okay, Here's what driver worked best in box versus say the one that I'm on, one, two, zero, three, two versus 1.2.1.15. And just kind of give it a go and try the different versions and see how the speed looks. Also following along with that article, making the VM have more virtual CPUs and more pair of virtual SCSI adapters, four of them. So I think that's gonna be a wrap for this video. Stay tuned for more videos where I'll go ahead and boot to Windows an NTFS format and check out the speed and run consumer utilities uh, to see how the 900p uh, firmware looks. See if I need to flash it as well. So thanks for watching and thanks for visiting tinkertry.com. More to come.